everybody and welcome to the Key Stage 2 Literacy lesson. In, the, in this unit of work, we are going to write a news report. But in this session in particular, we are going to investigate the features of a news report. We're going to look at that a bit more closely. Today, you will need a pen or a pencil. You're going to need a piece of paper and you're going to need a place that is free from distraction. Most importantly, make sure that you pause the video to give yourself enough time to answer all the examples and then practice it if you need more practice. Let's go! At the end of this topic, we will be writing a news report, but first we need to investigate how to become a successful news reporter. First of all, what does a news report look like? You might have some news reports at home that you can quickly go and find. And let's see if we can identify some of the features that they had before. So what does the structure look like? Also, what are the key features so what are the things that's similar in every single news report that you can find at home? And is there anything that we can magpie? Can I magpie any successful elements to inform my own writing? Before we start the unit, let's have a word of the day. Our word today is the word transparent. Let's think about what that means. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, it's an adjective and it means to allow you to see through something. Transparent means allowing you to see through it, which is an adjective and this is in the Oxford Dictionary. Now, we can also take this word a little bit further. If we think about how we want to use this word in a text, at the base of the waterfall, giant transparent pipes reach into the river. In this context, it is used slightly different. We can also get some antonyms for these, for the word transparent. Opaque or cloudy. Make sure you remember what antonyms are. Those are the words that means the opposite in meaning. If we move to this one here, the synonyms. Which words means the same? as transparent. You might want to just at this stage pause the video and jot down any more examples. I had the word see-through or clear, but I can also use it in another sentence. Because of this transparent water, you could see the fish swimming. So in that case, it's used as an adjective. back to news reports. Now we're going to be focusing specifically on the news report um, of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory but we're going to try and see if we can identify some key features because those are really important before you have to write your own news report so that you know what you have to use. Which features can be identified? Now at this stage you want to pause the, the video and write down as many things as you can remember. Could you find any of those newspaper report features in some of the newspapers at home? So before we look at another example, I thought I'll show you our first news. This is what it looks like, you see it in class, first news. It has lots and lots of different newspaper reports. And if I show you the first one, which is called Tutankhamun Treasures, we can look at this one. I can see the alliteration there. So that is the headline, there's Tutankhamun treasures. You can also spot further down my caption. I can see the byline, the person that wrote the newspaper report. I can see that formal register all the way through. Crafted, vessel, have lots of description coming through as well. Exquisite, delicately made, 
in Scotland in the world. Truly awesome. That one there. Beautiful object. You might see a few more. Another formal register there discovered. I can also see two columns that the newspaper report is written in. But there's one thing that I cannot see. Can you spot what it is? It is the quote. Can't see the witness being quoted. But what I can spot is the repetition of the pronouns. Instead of keep on saying Tutankhamun, I, I refer to Tutankhamun as he. He was only nine and he died at the age of 19. And that happens quite frequently in a news report. Now, if we take, go to this one, look at that picture there, going for a spin, that caption, we will spot the caption higher up. And then it's a, quite an intriguing news report. I really want to know but further. And that is stuck to three words, rats, drive, cars, exclamation mark. Try and keep it really short and hook the reader in that way. Played a little bit with the first word being in capital letters and again repeating the exclamation mark. Now I can see this particular report. If I go further down, I can spot something in this one that was not in the other one. That's correct. I can see that the witness has been quoted, said, Lambert said, I do believe, and then it's, it's these words directly written down. And then the last bit says, it's thought that scientists could now, we've spoken about that in a bit detail, the fact that it moves from past tense to present tense. Now that's just one example. You might find many more features in the newspapers. Keep looking, keep asking mum or dad if, if you can have a look through the newspapers and see if you can spot any more of these features that we were talking about. And remember to magpie, try and grab a few of those ideas that's gonna help you um, in writing your own newspaper later. So it's very important that we have to have our headline, we have to have our caption with our picture, and we must have columns. In the same report, we need to make sure we are having a formal register. We're having our five W's that gives us more information. We have some emotive language. We have an expanded noun phrase to add detail. We have some adverbs. Definitely have a quote with our inverted commas. We use pronouns or nouns. And then there would also be a relative clause. Now it's important that you see if you can spot any of these features in the newspaper report. Let's have a look. So this is the newspaper report we're going to be focusing on and it's called Gloop Gloop and it's based on the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So we know the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory really well. So we've taken the information but we're writing in the style of a news report. So let's see if we can spot the things that makes it a successful news report. So straight away I can see my headline at the top. Gloop, gloop. Now there's also a reason why I've gone for gloop, gloop because we also know that the surname of Augustus is gloop and therefore it also links with him falling into the river um, and having that repetition. Short um, short snappy headline. Now I can spot my picture here and I can also see this bit in the box. Can you remember what we call that? That's right, it's called a caption. Augustus Law is seen floundering in a river of chocolate. And then we start off. Now the first thing I can spot straight away would be the columns. And we start with our first section, the orientation. This afternoon, a shocking report has revealed that nine-year-old Augustus Gloop has disappeared mysteriously into what is claimed to be a huge river of chocolate within the walls of a mysterious closed chocolate 
factory. Mr Wonka, who owns the chocolate factory, explained to us that he had decided to open his factory to five lucky children with golden tickets. And then this is the bit that we referred to before, the inverted commas indicating that there's going to be a quote. And the quote is important because it, justify, it justifies what happened and it's someone's direct words from the incident. This is an important day. Years ago, I went out of business because my jealous competitors sent spies into the factory to learn all of my secrets. And then I have my next paragraph. So you can also spot that I had a first paragraph and then I had my second paragraph. Now, based on the previous features we looked at, I can see that there's some detail here. Disappeared mysteriously, emotive language. I also have the eyewitness recount. And then there is my relative clause that I was referring to. And you can see here the word he. So I deliberately didn't say Mr. Wonka again. I reused a pronoun and that you'll find a lot of those examples. We don't tend to repeat the person's name in the, in the news report. We would be using a pronoun. So in the example that you found home, can you also spot the pronouns used rather than the person's name repeated throughout the news report? And then that takes me to the second slide of the news report. So again, I can see the structure, my two columns. I can see paragraph in each. Children entering the chocolate room, not to touch anything, Mr. Wonka commented. Augustus just didn't listen to my instructions. It's his own fault, but I can assure you that he'll be fine. So again, the pronouns coming through. Next paragraph, Charlie Bucket, who is one of the lucky children, told our reporter, when we first entered the chocolate room, I encountered an amazing sight, a gorgeous green, who oh, can spot that technique, you got it, alliteration. So they tend to use those in a news report. This is another technique that, re uh, that grabs the reader's attention. Valley cut by a brown river, which includes a waterfall. At the base of the waterfall, giant transparent. So word of the day. Pipes reach into the river, suck the bubbling liquid out of it and carry it away. On both sides of the river, just different ways of starting a sentence, a variety of trees and flowers grow, but everything is made entirely of chocolate. To begin with, I was too awestruck to speak. So a lot of quotes appearing in this news report because that shows the reader that it really happened because it's someone's opinion of the incident and someone's direct words. Baruch Salt, who is another child visiting the factory, again, a relative clause, adding additional information into a sentence, claimed that she saw peculiar diminutive people. Fantastic word to use there. Oompa Loompas. So explaining who are the people I'm referring to who could be involved in the disappearance. I want one to take home, she told our reporter. Her mother, Mrs Salt, who is a geography teacher, told us, Mr Wonka's tale that these creatures were smuggled in from Loompa land were the jungles where the jungles are infested with. So look at all of these elements highlighted on the newspaper report. I showed you how to repeat the pronouns so that you don't use the same person's name. Detail, we also have additional information, lots and lots of adjectives and description, relative clauses, and then the facts. We can see who it was, we can see where it happened, we can say, see when it happened. Um, infested with beasts that prey on Oompa Loompas. It's ridiculous. When they began dancing, beating drums and singing a song about Augustus Greek on the far side of the river, I was appalled. So again, the inverted commas there. And in a statement, Mr. Gloop reported. So different words for said 
used in this particular news report as well. Look at Mrs. Gloop's face here. She was distraught about the incident and the picture is, is a true re resemblance of the caption. It matches it very closely. I can see her distraught face. She's absolutely mortified. Of course I didn't jump in after him. I was wearing my best suit. So that is the mother quoting there. And in an interview with Mrs. Gloop, she stated, I just couldn't believe my eyes when my little darling was sucked up viciously. Now look at how we refer here to little darling because that is how Mrs. Gloop would refer to him. And in her words, we would use exactly what she would say. So it wouldn't normally have that formal register and the same tone throughout the report. When it's someone's words, we try and capture the essence of that character viciously into a huge pipe and then shot out of it like a rocket. Similarly there as well, lots of description. And then that brings me to that very last paragraph. And we normally call that, who can remember? That's it, the reorientation. And it takes it from the past back to the present. Currently, the race is now on the fine Augustus before it's too late. Mrs. Gloop demands to know where her son is fearing that he will end up as a marshmallow. If you have any further information, please contact our reporting team. That's normally how you would finish off your news report. So that is a very good example of all of the different features captured in this news report. Hope you have made a note of all of these great ideas, words like reported, words like stated, because we want a magpie good ideas from other reports. Starting my last paragraph with the word currently, um, and you might use with viciously, all sorts of different things that you can mac by. So when you get to the stage of having to write your report later on in this half term, you might come back to this report and mac by good ideas. Now we're gonna be moving on to the independent task. Now, it's important to pause the video so that you can have a go with this activity first. Now, I've sent you the link um, through the email this week. All you need to do is click on the link. That will take you to the worksheet that you need to complete. So make sure that you are writing down your answers. And when you have finished, you can then check how close you got to the correct answers. Now, the task today is we are going to look at the newspaper report of George's Marvellous Medicine. And that's written by Roald Dahl. Now, in this particular example, it's not a story. We've taken the story and changed it to a newspaper report. And this is what it looks like. So if you clicked on the link that I shared with you earlier in the week, you will then be able to see this exact resource. Grandma grows giant. Look at how we play here with alliteration. Grandma grows giant. So make sure you have a quick read through the newspaper report. And then you're going to be answering afterwards. Yesterday afternoon in a small sleepy village of Ingleby, Villagers were left shocked and amazed at the sight of Mrs. Gert exploding out of the roof of Cranky's farm. It has been reported, again a very good phrase to Macboy for future reference, that George Cranky, who is the grandson of Mrs. Gert, has given his grandma a mysterious medicine which had resulted in her growing 10 foot tall. It is alleged Again, a very powerful word to use in your own report that George, aged eight, I've dropped that information in there, was due to give his grandma her regular dose of medicine while his mum, Mrs. Cranky, was out shopping. However, instead of using her regular medicine, he decided to add a few extra ingredients. Events took a turn for the worse when Mrs. Gert started to expand outwards outwards, then upwards, and eventually out of the roof. So all you're going to do at this stage is keep reading the newspaper report, which will take you to the next one. See if you can spot the things we have noticed before. So we have our columns. I can also see 
some inverted commas. Anything else that you can spot? We have the word currently repeated in this report too. The word stated, different words for said, reported, stated. And then this last paragraph, we mentioned about taking it from the past to the present. So you might spot the present tense are blocking in that particular example. Now, as soon as you've read the report, you to your questions so you can very clearly see question one question two question three question four question five so at this stage you should pause the video have a go answering the questions on the link and then afterwards we'll mark it you ready let's go so the first one was asking us tick the boxes to show which of the following features you would find in a newspaper report and yes, you're correct. We will find a headline and we will definitely find a caption. Question two asked us, read the first paragraph that contains the five W's. So this is where it was really important for you to read the news report in detail. And they wanted us to work out when this incident happened, who was involved, where it took place, what and why. So let's start with the when. Check your answers as well. So it's yesterday afternoon. Who? Mrs. Gert. Where? The farm. What? Mrs. Gert exploded out of the roof. Also make sure that when you answer these questions, you try and include all of the detail. You don't just have about the exploding. You also include where specifically that explosion happened. And then why did this happen? Because George had given us some mysterious medicine again alliteration then lots and lots of examples of alliteration let's take us to question three write a caption because you would have noticed on our original report there's no caption for the picture all we could see is the character coming out of the roof and you could have different things i had terrible times for mrs skirt or mrs skirt had last seen growing out of the roof so it's trying to link back to the actual thing that is happening to mrs skirt which then takes us to question four how close did you get with this one find and copy the words in the text to complete these expanded noun phrases so what flowers the beautiful flowers what medicine mysterious medicine ancient caravan and then we have the gigantic grizzly grandma and again a fantastic example of alliteration which is all about the sound rather than the letter and that takes us to our very last question fingers hopefully we got this one because it's the last question which of these quotes can be found in the text so there might be more than one so i gave you three options i didn't realize my medicine would do this I'm so relieved she have been rescued and I told her to be a good boy and not to get up to any mischief. So if we go back and read the report, we can find the first one and the second one in the report. And be proud of what you've done. Doesn't matter if you had some of those questions incorrect. Just keep trying, keep having a go at these home learning projects because for us is trying to work out what we need to be doing next so that we're going to be successful when we have to write our own newspaper report. Also make sure you share, share with, with everyone else what you've achieved. Now we're going to have a quick um, spelling lesson. So this link has also been shared with you and all you need to do is just go on it. We, today we're going to be looking at how to spell the sh sound. Hopefully this is going to work if I click on it. Waiting for that one to come up. Let's just minimise that for the moment. So the shin sound, it can be spelled in three different ways. 
which one which one you use depends on the last letter or letters of the root word. So there's different ways that you can use this suffix. Let's get back onto the actual thing there. Let's have a look what they say. Which one should you use? Question one. Which suffix should I add to the word magic to make magician? Uh, correct! Words which end with a C or sweet S use the C-I-A-N suffix. And here's your magician! Ah. And a bonus question. Which suffix would I add to expand to make expansion? Correct! Words which end with a D or S-E usually use S-I-O-N to make a new word. <laughs> now, contestant number two. Your word is invent. <laughs> I'm afraid that is incorrect. Invent ends with a T, and words ending in T or T-E use T-I-O-N. So, no hoverboard invention for you. Join us next week for another exciting episode of What You Smell Is What You Get. So, on that video clip, we could see that you can spell it in different ways. You can always go back and watch the clip again. So it all depends on that root word and what the root word ends in. For example, magic ended with a C, invent ended with a T. And that would then depend on what suffix I'll be using. Using So the C or the CS would become that one, sh, magic, magician. And then we have the D or the SE, which then have this sh added to it. And then the very last one, the T-I-O-N. Now there's a few examples here. At this stage, you might want to pause the video and see if you can find any more shin words. You might go through your reading book that you have at home and see if you can spot any shin words. And why did they use that particular shin? Is it because the word ended on a C or a CS? Is it because the word ended on a D or a SE? Or maybe it was the T or the T-E. Now, at the very end, there's also a link showing you how you can add more words to it. So when you've watched this clip, click on the next link and then have a go at writing the words that they've given you. So they've started with the root word. Have a think back to the rules we've just discussed and then which shin would be suitable for each one of those words. And then that brings us to the very last bit. So the quiz, who's ready for a challenge? Let's click on that one and go back, one back. Click on that one. Now, when you click on the last link that was sent to you, you just start your quiz and it brings you back to the original newspaper report about George's Marvelous Medicine. And you can just answer all of these questions and see how close you got to the first one. So for, for example, first question asks, in the above text, yesterday afternoon refers to which of the five W's? And then you just have an option and you choose which option and see how close you can get to having all of the questions correctly. And you can always go back Make sure you magpie all of those great ideas from George's Marvelous Medicine and all of the great ideas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Lots of other ideas on um, the website, so you can always go back to the bite size, look at more spelling ideas, or the Oak National website as well, Oak National Academy, and they give you lots of different resources within the newspaper report section. Thank you very much for joining today and good luck with the online learning. See you all very soon. Bye.